Hello Flufftube, I'm Jessica the Rainy Day Stitcher. Today is Sunday, February 7th, and this is Flufftube number two. Um, for those of you who are just joining me, this is my channel where I talk about cross stitch and a little bit of other needle arts. Um, and today I have some whips, works in progress. I have a new start. I have quite a bit of haul, and I even have a mini unboxing that I'm gonna do at the end. Before I get into that though, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who watched and commented on my first video. Um, I've heard several floss tubers talk about the warmth and acceptance of this crafting community, and usually when I hear those things, I kinda go, but you're fabulous. Of course people love you. Um, and I was honestly shocked by the sort of warmth and uh, impact, which I know for many of you was still like small potatoes, but at least for me, the idea that, um, you know, dozens of people and a, a, you know, a few hundred people would watch and, you know, subscribe and whatnot was um, just, I was blown away. So um, thank you to um, everyone who's returning. Um, all right, so let's get into the whips. What have I been working on? If you're new to the channel and uh, didn't go back and watch my first video, which like no expectation of that, uh, I'm a relatively new cross stitcher. I've only been uh, involved in this craft since mm, about mid-May. I'm definitely one of the new pandemic 2020 stitchers. Uh, so I don't have a ton of whips. I'm sort of a semi-monogamous stitcher. Uh, but I think that's mostly because I just don't have a bunch of starts. Uh, and uh, I can already sort of feel the ground starting to shift beneath my feet a little bit. Um, so I just have like four. But the first one I have is my Guns and Ships by Taylor and Cromwell. This is a pattern that is all based off of the lyrics to one of the Hamilton raps. It's Lafayette's rap. And uh, I have an image here, let me pull it up, of what the full thing looks like. Put in the darn passcode, scroll. My iPad's really old and it's like slower than anything. Okay, so here we go. This is sort of, I know it's the screen on screen, but give you a sense of how it all is with the sort of lyrics and then all the words integrated in and up around themselves. Um, my kid uh, is a theater kid. They want to major in a combined theater and creative writing when they go to college so I thought that this was a really fabulous sort of gift to do for them so I'm trying really hard to get this done uh, you know by J July early August so I can send it with them and uh, this is sort of two pages and I'm integrating in the sort of names across the Lafayette and then it's going to be the Hamilton. Um, I'm doing the uh, top leg of the gold stitches with a chronic blending filament. So it's a little bit of like gold and glitzy. If I go to the side, you might be able to pick up a little bit of the shimmer. Um, I had no idea when I was starting this project, like what a pain in the butt it is to work not only with metallic threads generally, but the blending filament in particular is kind of snarky. Uh, since since I've started this project, um, I've been working on some other things that use uh, Krennic and um, have realized that, yeah, the blending filament was not a good choice for a newbie without a lot of experience. But, you know, I've shortened it way up. I've, you know, got my thread. What is it now? Sort of thread magic, thread heaven, whichever one is still in production and you can get. Um, and it's sort of helping a lot, but probably not gonna do that again. My uh, second whip is my Dark Queen of the Sea by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I should also say I'm gonna be much better about putting links and things down in the description box. So uh, if you wanna see any of these, you can sort of click on those. So uh, I finished the uh, January section which was all of this um, sort of coral and seaweed. And then the new section that came out on February 1st is this really amazing ink blots that sort of go and circle around. Um, and then we had two options here. 
we could choose either to have our Dark Queen hold a like, magic ball, um, which is the only one I have downloaded because that's what I'm going to do. Um, or you could have her like holding a skull in her hand. So if I can get this to load, there we go. Mm -mm. Don't want to show the pattern. So here's, here's what she'll look like at the end of this month when I get all of the ink dots sort of added in and then this sort of magic ball. And the magic ball is done in petite treasure braid in this really gorgeous teal color. Um, but for that, I, I was sort of going back and forth between the skull or the, the sort of magic ball that I um, can be a little edgy and I like the idea of it being the Dark Queen and she's holding the skull. Um, but my kid, who is totally like backseat driving the stitch along, still is barely on speaking terms with me because I chose a different face. We had an option for faces and I thought this one was just like drop dead stellar and gorgeous and amazingness but they wanted the other face and I still hear about how I did the wrong face and not the one that they wanted and um so I kind of feel like I have to do the magic ball uh, but I liked the sort of dimension of the skull it has a really cool sort of spatial effect in the way Aaron at Autumn Lane Stitchery is doing the shading on all these pieces I mean he's just a master of color and color theory and all of that um so i think what i'm going to do is for the very middle of the magic ball that's going to go here is i'm going to swap out for some beads uh, so that there's this sort of bumpy three-dimensionality to that section um, so i'm currently sort of up here and going to continue around and i'm working on this a little bit every day it's making slow progress but i'm hoping to sort of have it done you know by the middle of the month, right? So that I can spend some time on other things. My third whip is my Santa Sunday project. Um, and it is, oh my gosh, Jeweled Baubles by Shannon Christine Design. And I finished all of the stitching in it. So for the last two or three weeks, I've been working on the beading and uh, let me get in so you can kind of see some of these beads. Each of these baubles is like dripping, just crusted with beads and beadwork. And so, um, you know, it's, it's been a lot of time going through and getting them all integrated in. Uh, I am loving this pattern. And even though it's been super complicated, I feel like it has been, um, sort of a good a good experience for me like there are some fractional stitches but not a ton there's a ton of beading but once you sort of figure out the beading it's going pretty fast um my only hiccup was that the bugle beads I got so for the middles of these you can sort of see like in here there's supposed to be all kinds of beading around were too long and they wouldn't fit so I had to order some shorter bugle beads uh, they just arrived, and so I think tonight I'm going to go in and fill in this middle and this middle, and then I'll have one, two, three, four, five of the baubles done. This one has got like a few of the beads in, but just like a smattering. Same thing with this guy. He's got like five beads. Mainly I had a little bit of the Nymo still on my needle, and I was like, let me just throw some beads in the next sort of space. Um, but these three here in this little line are all that I have left. So I'm hoping that working on this on Sundays, I can still have this done probably, you know, early March, give or take. Um, but man, this is just beautiful and stellar. And uh, I went ahead and put it on mini stretcher bars. I forget exactly where I heard that as a tip, um, but it's made the beading really nice. It's not very heavy. I mean, it's kind of a pain. It's big to like put my arm back and forth, but... Um, beading in hand with all of these beads was just going to be like untenable. So I'm really glad that I grabbed some of the mini stretcher bars from 123 Stitch. So, so those are sort of my three main whips. Uh, but then I also have, uh, oh, I forgot one. Look, I'm already, I have these notes. I'm still scatterbrained. Um, I was really, really inspired. This is not cross stitch, but it's still needlework. But um, by D 
Denise at Black Ribbon Studio was, here I'll put it by my feet, posting these pictures of this beautiful crochet blanket. They also do quite a bit of crochet. And um, I had a blanket that I kind of had started working on, but hadn't really picked up very often. Uh, and so they were sort of inspiring me to pull this project out and give it a, give it a look, um, give it some love, right? And the day that I did that, it happened to be a little snowy. I'm in, in Denver, and so like we're having a pretty mild winter, but generally speaking, this time of year, any day it can be snowing. And so I th think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a page out of Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, out of her book, and make this a snow day project. So any day that it snows, I'm going to pull this out and put a few, few rows in. Uh, I also sort of keep it next to me when I'm on the couch, sort of my little stitching corner, so that like if my eyes get tired or I'm just not feeling up to the tiny little X's, I can pull this out. But that hasn't been happening as often as I, I just sort of thought it would. Um, so this, this really hasn't gotten a lot of attention. So anyway, this is the sort of sampler afghan that I'm working on. You can sort of see I've got long, but you sort of go on back and forth and back and forth with all of these different stitches. And... Uh, this, this pattern has been kind of funny and kind of fun because it, it all started with some Facebook ads. I don't know about you all, I'm usually pretty good at avoiding those Facebook ads, but sometimes there are ones that are just, like they get you, right? And I kept getting these ads for this seaside blanket um, from Annie's Kit Club Craft Things. Uh, it was this really gorgeous, you know, blanket with all these different stitches and uh, they would have these photos of it like thrown over a beach chair with the ocean in the background and my apartment's done up and lots of like blues and teals and grays and I was like, oh, that would look gorgeous in my house. Um, but when you do the math on the kit club, it's like 10 months at 20 bucks a month, $200 for some acrylic yarn and um, I just, I couldn't do it, couldn't bring myself to do it, too expensive. But I noticed, I kept like drooling over these pictures, they would show up every fourth ad, um, that someone in the comments of one of them asked a question about the pattern and the sort of company rep went on and said, we have a very similar pattern uh, that's available as just the PDF. Um, and so they were like, if you like the blanket, you might, you might like this. And uh, I looked and lo and behold, I swear, I, I analyze these photos a lot. Um, it's, it's the same blanket. It's literally the same blanket. The colors, you know, once you do the color conversion, they match exactly. So this is what it's going to look like. It's the only one I ever print out of when it's all done. Um, and so I just went in and looked in close and I figured out, oh, this orange is the you know, teal and this sort of sandy color is the white and, you know, this blue is the sort of purpley gray and I'm basically doing my own version of this seaside blanket. Um, I'm super excited about what this is going to look like when it's all done if I, you know, make myself pull it out and work on it. Um, make is sort of a relative term, right? I mean, I, I enjoy it, but I've just been so into the stitching that I have a limited amount of time for crafting and I haven't wanted to like not work on my bubbles or you know whatnot so um, that's my other sort of big whip that's been happening I should also say man that Annie's kit club has this new one Moroccan tiles afghan oh it's gorgeous another crocheted afghan another $200 acrylic yarn project that one they have not released a pattern yet so I don't know what I'm gonna do but um, that one's super tempting too not $200 so tempting buy a Lowry stand with that money instead, but still, it's gorgeous, so look look it up if you uh, are into crochet blankets. All right, so now, those are my whips. I have a new start, if I can get my iPad to behave. Maybe it's not going to. I wanted to pull up the image for you all, um, but I started the Stronger Together style that's being put on by Fat Quarter Shop. Um, and I think this is such a cool idea. It's in honor of Black History Month. It, the pattern uh, is very much based off of the quilts that um, 
you know, people would make to communicate the directions to go for the Underground Railroad. The um, sort of pattern itself came with some mini biographical information about an African-American slave who became a seamstress and made um, dresses for Mrs. Lincoln and was able to buy her freedom and that of her children or her child. And um, all of the proceeds from this pattern go to the United Negro College Fund. Um, I think that this is a, a fabulous idea. So this is sort of what, here, I'll zoom in a little bit, what the pattern looks like. And you can do it as either, trying to hold that angle for the glare, either a cross stitch, all of those are not working. I hope I'm not making you too dizzy. Um, or as a quilt, there's sort of a quilt pattern version. And the symbols that are involved are really significant, but the colors a little less so. So I sort of played around and thought about changing the colors up. Um, and I did, but I kind of went with the same aesthetic and just did um, some more jeweled tones. So this is my Stronger Together. I'm trying to work on two 100 stitch blocks of motifs a day. Um, I have it sort of figured out. I mean, I charted some words. I charted a quote by Bell Hooks that I'm going to put at the top and the bottom about um, love being the, the sort of, I forget if it's the path. I think it might, she might, her phrase might be the path, but um, love being essential on a movement towards freedom and justice. Um, and so I'm going to sort of divide that out at the top and the bottom. Um, but you can sort of see I still did the blues and the greens and the pinks. Um, but sort of change them out for stuff that's a, a slightly different tone and shade. So I'll be continuing to work on this throughout the month of February. And uh, I've really been liking this because the little motifs are pretty basic. And um, not that the image is sort of basic and simplistic, but, you know, once I start to figure out, oh, I'm doing one of the little triangles or I'm doing one of the little diamonds that, you know, I can, like, watch TV and work on it or have some coffee. My brain's not all on yet, but... Um, you know, work on it. And I, I sort of love the message of this and uh, I'm really excited to be participating. I should say the fabric here, I did not buy the teal fabric from Fat Quarter Shop, but I had some mystery hand dyed Ada that I got from a lot on Stash and Load uh, that was like the perfect blue color. So that's what I'm using there. It's just a 14 count Ada. So when I'm not working on those, uh, I've been shopping have not been very good about resisting the shopping and you know everything with the supply chain and the mail is like all cattywampus right now so I have some packages that I accidentally mailed to my other sort of domicile my um, spouse lives in Austin and so depending on where I think I'm gonna be is where I have things sort of sent um, so I know there's stuff there that's like waiting for me um, I have stuff here, I have stuff that I ordered that's come in from weeks ago. I mean, you all know, right? Like, it's just been all topsy-turvy up in the up in the air. Um, but the first thing is something that I didn't get in the mail. I was super kind of stoked. So these things are super cheesy. Totally going to own it. But my Bed Bath & Beyond is going out of business. So I was driving by and I thought, you know, I should pop in and just sort of see what's left. I really was hoping for like a Yankee Candle because I'm in an apartment with like lots of animals. But, um... They, they were gone, long gone. They're down to just this tiny little bit, but they had these bags for five bucks. And I was like, okay, that would be an awesome project bag. So they were these like, okay, this one has watermelons on it. Um, they're supposed to be like beach bags. And so they're made out of this vinyl that would be real easy to get the sand out. They have these pockets on the front that you can like touch your phone through. But I was like, whatever, I can put floss in that, right? Or little beads or whatnot and you can sort of see I thought this is a pretty good size bag I mean it wouldn't hold a q-snap but for stuff that I'm organizing or kidding up or a small project or whatnot like this would be awesome and five dollars right um so I got the, the cheesy little watermelons um I sort of thought about this when um Cataloging my stitches, Kim is doing this like watermelon baby dirty dancing project and she got a watermelon project bag and I was like, oh, I got a watermelon project bag too. We can be like semi twinsies. Um, I also got this one. I'm going to have to cut the rope off. It's got this like it's catching on everything. This giant like nautical rope. That's just going to be a pain. But 
you know, nondescript seashells. Again, I mean, it's cute. I like it. I do lots of beachy blue things. Um, maybe I wouldn't have picked it for the original price, but five bucks. And then uh, this one has like, it's very 1985 with these palm tree branches and the sort of birds of paradise flowery pointiness. And it says vacay all day on the back. Um, so yeah, super excited to start loading these up with all the things that I am organizing and setting up. Um, I also went to Michelle Bendy Stitchy's live sale that she had, live sale, sales plural, right, all of January. Um, and she did it in this really cool way where um, you sort of sit, I'd have my coffee, I'd have my stitching, and she would, you know, show stuff, and then you would type in the word, like, there was like a keyword that would put us in little groups so that you could then have a lottery for who was interested in thing X at price Y. She had patterns, stuff she had started, kits, uh, and a bunch of bags, especially, you know, some from like Bags Plus, which I'd never even heard of. And she had these floss buddies. And I was like drooling over the floss buddies. Um, you'll get to see one in a second if like me, you had no idea what a floss buddy was. Uh, and so every time she would like show one of these, I'm like, word, word, zero for zero. I'm not particularly lucky. Um, so. She did a sale and I was like, okay, my name, to, you know, Nightbot didn't pick me for anything. So I went to Bags Plus to see like how much is one of these just new and they're like 13 bucks with, you know, five bucks shipping from England from Etsy and I was like, heck yeah. So I ordered two of these floss buddies and they, they arrived. So I've got this one. You can see it's got all these adorable little pockets. Um, oh, it's upside down. Not that you could tell on the video, but you sort of slide your floss in and then, you know, you have your floss organized and it sort of slides into your project bag. And this one is this beautiful, like, peacocky colors, blues and, and sort of teals. You can see there's sort of a vinyl pocket in the back. You could put your skeins and whatnot. So I got this one, which I love and was just gorgeous. Sort of a um, brocade -y kind of a fabric too. Really nice with this, like, shimmery, goldy thread. Uh, and then the other one I got, I was so excited. It's a William Morris print. Um, if you don't know, William Morris was this uh, designer and um, he illustrated some books, but he was real into like arts and crafts interior. It was this sort of reaction against industrialization and this idea of also like proto-nationalism. Um, I should also say I'm an art historian, so sometimes I sort of slip into teacher mode like I did right there and you'll just have to forgive me can't really help it um but anyway he, he was real interested in sort of using semi medieval -y designs as a way to um help build like an english identity separate from italy because you know everyone in this is the 1800s and everyone's way into like raphael and the italian renaissance so anyway we have this gorgeous one with these birds and these little berries and these flowers and it's very reminiscent of like a 15th century tapestry um, and then you see, same thing, floss buddies, you slide your little flosses in, and it's super cute, and it's super handy, and, um, I cannot wait to, like, stick my stuff in here. I also bought some needle minders, so, um, I got these two from Supernatural Stitches. Um, Katura, I think that's how you say her name, is doing a sal based on the Haunted Mansion, my family is a huge Disney family. We go to Disney several times a year when it's not a pandemic. Um, we even go a few times when it when it is and we sort of socially distance and wash our hands a lot. Um, but when I knew there, found out there was this Haunted Mansion sale, I was like, ooh, that's really tempting. I'm not sure if I'm gonna participate yet. I'm still kind of waiting and seeing how it would fit into my plans and if I like the style of the pattern and all that kind of stuff. But she um, is doing it for free, but she, uh, put out these needle minders and she had several um, and I really really liked this one a ton it's the sort of um, promotional poster that they would put up like come to the haunted mansion and then this one which is one of the stretch room portraits uh, this one's a little pinky for how it is at the ride but um, I, I really love it and it's it's super cute so I, I snagged those um, she might still have some available in the Facebook group I'll link that down below and then I ordered these two from Quail Valley Creations on Etsy. 
These are so gorgeous. They are on wood, so they're super lightweight. We have this really beautiful like hummingbird with this little flower. I love hummingbirds. I love that they are these like beautiful sort of fanciful kinds of creatures, but they're also like, they're spunky, man, and like super territorial. And so the Aztecs and other um, Mixteca cultures would have, you know, um, jaguar warriors, but they would also have hummingbird warriors because hummingbirds are like fierce. Um, and I love the sort of complexity of that beauty and and fierceness of them, as well as just like the colors, they're sort of iridescent and anyway, love, love, love some hummingbirds. And then the super gorgeous Jane Austen portrait. So um, I'm a big reader, love lots of books, read the classics, read um, everything from Jane Austen, Emily Bronte, to um, Stephen King, Young Adult, Hunger Games, Twilight, um, all of it. So, but I, I love Austen. I have a, I have a soft spot for her. For many years on my birthday, I have read Pride and Prejudice on my birthday. Many years, I just do it cover to cover in the afternoon. And so, um, I know I've got some Jane Austen stitching coming up. And, uh, so I was like, yeah, let's do the needle minder. My last set is from Rebel Stitcher who sells on Instagram and Facebook. I'll, again, put links down below. Um, but I won! Oh, I won this amazing, like seriously amazing, Kamala Harris needle minder with the chalk and the broken glass. Like, hells to the yeah. Totally. Um, I, first time I won anything. I was so excited. Um, and so when she was getting ready to mail it, I was like, hey, I want to buy another one. Um, and so I bought this really, um, this sort of really important Black Lives Matter one. Uh, and so these two actually are what I usually have on my Fat Quarter Shop stitching. Uh, and I think they're both still available um, with, uh, I think Colleen is her name. So um, check out the Rebel Stitcher. The, uh, her designs are pretty awesome. Uh, she also has a floss tube. I'll link that down below too. Uh, but, you know, for someone who only has uh, four whips, you know, plus a crochet blanket and buying six needle minders, like, I clearly have a little bit of a problem. Uh, I also got a couple of kits. So the first one, I had my eye on this for a while. I was doing an Amazon order for the evil Amazon for some things. But I went ahead and threw in because it was on sale, this Dimension Stocking Kit. Um... No idea when I'll start this, probably in May, but then not work on it until, you know, next Christmas. And maybe I'll have this hanging up in my house by, you know, 2027 or something. Um, but I love the sort of design. I love the woodland creatures. It's not super cheesy. I find, I mean, I love the dimension stockings. Don't get me wrong, but some of them are kind of cheesy and um, not really my style. So I, I thought this one was beautiful. I kind of had had my eye on it for a while and... Um, Super excited to, to sort of get this at some unforeseen spot in the future. The other kit I got was the Sense and Sensibility Cell. Uh, this is being put on by Stitching Book Club. And uh, it came with this beautiful hand-dyed fabric. So pull it out. It's this gorgeous, like, kind of wedge woody blue. And then all of these... Um, Flosses that just are gorgeous against it. Um, and then the, the real reason I wanted the kit, there was a, a white conversion that had some purple that was really lovely. But it also came with some like finishing fabric and cording. And um, I mean, I haven't finished a ton of projects, but I've only fully finished, like turned into a thing that you can put on the wall, one Mill Hill kit. That's it. So, um, I thought maybe getting the kit for the Sense and Sensibility Sal, um, with the, you know, finishing supplies might encourage me to, like, fully finish a cross stitch and put it on my wall. I spent a ton of time working on a craft to, like, not have any of it in my house. Another thing that came is my Live and Die LA Advent package. So, Valerie at Live and Die LA, oops, something went boom, uh, is amazing. She does these beautiful hand-dyed fabrics. She's just started doing 
some flosses that are gorgeous. She does a Friday night TGIFs fabrics that are um, sort of fabric nights where she posts them and it's first come first serve and you me please. Um, she's also done some sort of not really stitch alongs but where she uh, sourced a pattern and the supplies for it and then a lot of people in the group are working on it um, and she does these beautiful hand fine fabrics for that. So she um, is into the holidays and for that decided to do this advent event. So basically every day she would list something. Sometimes it was something that was already done and uh, you know, there's five of these or something she got like patterns or needle minders, you know, there's X number. Sometimes it was a colorway and so you would say what kind of fabric you wanted and so um, then she would dye them. And so at the end, there was this like package of stuff that came. Um, so I got several things. So the first thing I got was this Shannon Christine pattern of the Christmas snow globe. I love these. Um, I think I want to get some of the others, not the one with the truck, but the one with the deer and the sleigh. And um, I think there's another one with just a deer uh, and do them to go with my jeweled baubles. I think that's going to look smashing. Um, I also received, set this little guy aside, a needle minder. Um, clearly I have a needle minder problem. I know I'm not alone in that, like not even close, but of this cute little owl and a snowflake. He's so adorable. Love owls, love lots of animals, but I've been slowly befriending this owl that sits in a tree outside my patio almost every night. Uh, and uh, so he hoots and I hoot and he hoots back. And uh, then actually just around the building is the tree that he crashes in a lot of the days. And underneath the tree, there's all these owl pellets with little bones in them. They're like poking with a stick and see what he's eating. And I can see him. He's a beautiful, giant, great horned owl. And um, he's just amazing. So anyway, I'm totally on an owl thing. Um, I got a thing of floss that she called Holly. Very Christmassy, red and green. This is one of her first experiments in the hand dyed floss and uh, it's it's awesome. She did some fabric colorways. So I got, um, I'm not gonna take these out of these bags. I got On Thin Ice, which is this beautiful like gray, which is a little bit of modeling. She did this one called Nice. This one, we had no idea what it looked like. It was just, you had to pick, or you could pick naughty or nice and it was a surprise. And so this one came in this really pretty like sort of light but or a uh, deep but not necessarily super intense dark blue that I think is going to have some really interesting sort of contrast for some Christmas stitching particularly like wintery stitching then I also the first week of January got a fabric in the Friday night sort of fabric extravaganza um called California stage it's this super dark um sort of brownie green it's beautiful. It's got a ton of modeling on it. And I want to put uh, the Nora Corbett uh, lily pad sprite on this. I have it almost all kitted up. I want to start it for Mania. I had bought a fabric from Hand Dyed by Rolanda that was just beautiful, beautifully modeled. But um, when it came, it was a little bit lighter than the, the way my phone had projected the picture. Totally a thing with Hand Dyed fabric, right? But I was worried that the iridescent wings of the fairy wouldn't show up. And so I think this is going to be just perfect. It's a little like murky pondy. And then in the package, Valerie also tossed in the fabric of the month for January. So it's called Make Lemonade. And it is this like electric yellow. Um, I am not a yellow person. Like I'm not really a big pink person, but I'm definitely not a yellow person. I used to have a recurring nightmare where my family was in my room and they were just painting everything yellow. Uh, it was very much like the scene from the producers when she like paints the whole office white. And in the dream, I'm like running around like, stop, stop. And I had this dream from, I don't know, like third or fourth grade to like eighth grade, probably once if not twice a month. And I'd wake up like oh, all in a panic and like, jerky and, and angry and and all of those things right so I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with this there's nothing against the fabric the fabric is beautiful but I'm I'm not putting this in my house 
but it's gorgeous. And so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to download from Lindy Stitches the Dumpster Fire Friends Forever, which I think, especially if I change up, it has yellow flowers, but if I change the color, it's going to look like maze balls on this. So, and then I can give it to one of my friends, I think Chris. Um, not that any of you need to know or care who Chris is, but she's my oldest friend. So we've been friends since like high school. Uh, and we both have had sort of dumpster fires going on simultaneously at different points in our life. So um, I'm thinking, yeah, and then she can put it in her house. And it'll be beautiful and loved. Uh, and I won't be putting something yellow up in my house. So in addition to those, I also got one of these little Mill Hill kits right? These cookies for Santa. I went through a holiday treat sort of obsession this, this holiday season. And uh, I love these little milk kits as like most of us do, right? And I was watching, um, you know, Kim cataloging my stitches. She's talking about her plans for March Madness and how she's going to start all these things. And I was like, you know, I would love to participate in March Madness and start a bunch of things. But I don't have a bunch of stash. I'm frantically like buying stuff to get things kitted up for mania. Like that's been my plan and I have it sort of charted out. So if I start stuff in March, I'm going to have stuff to start in May. Like, ah, what am I going to do? I realized I have a whole freaking stack of these little Mill Hill kits. So I made a hashtag. Feel free to join me. Mill Hill March Madness. Whether it's starting new Mill Hill kits working on existing Mill Hill kits, whether it's doing beading, let's go with Mill Hill or not Mill Hill, I don't care, uh, but beading on a project, like let's fill March Madness with beads. Um, or do whatever else you want for March Madness or not do March Madness at all. I mean, I'm not a sports person, I don't really care about the basketball part, but it's mainly an excuse to like do a bunch of different stitching. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get, I got this and I'm gonna do all these Mill Hill kits but of course, I'm not happy with that. So I uh, went to one, two, three stitch because there was a ton of things that I needed to like round out some different projects. So, you know, we've got like here are the shorter bugle beads and then beads for another thing I'm working on. And, um, you know, one more skein of silk for X and some more of the gun here bending filament for the guns and two more spools. Right. Some like. Um, milk paint silks for a shadow lane, you know, just random, random on, well, I shouldn't say random, but you know, as opposed to kidding up like a single project, like all these little things that I needed for small projects. I looked at the sort of total of my cart and I was like, well, wow, you know, I'm not at my budget yet, which is kind of ludicrous because I'm way over budget with all the other stuff that I bought, but I had given myself a budget for this purchase. So I was like, I guess I need some more Mill Hill kits. Right, so I got this one to go with the winter treats of this like gorgeous gingerbread house with these little gumdrop buttony things and peppermint sticks and just all kinds of gorgeous nests. Um, and then I also got <laughs> this itty bitty little hedge pig. He is so adorable. Um, I love hedge pigs. Um, I say it that way because I heard someone, probably David Attenborough, say it hedge pigs. Um, or maybe it was a Harry Potter. Anyway, in my house, we sort of go back and forth. Hedgehogs, head pigs. Um, but he's so cute. We had one as a class pet for a while that came home with us for the summer. And I spent my whole summer with this little critter, like, curled up with me while I read my books. Uh, and then also my husband. Uh, I love him dearly, but I, I tease him mercilessly. And uh, that's our relationship. We've been together since we were kids. And so that's how it goes. But uh, he had a haircut a couple, 18 months ago, just before the pandemic. And uh, <laughs> he like sent me the picture and it's like, what do you think? And I'm like, oh my God, you look like a hedgehog. Like it was all like slicked back with these little spiky things going back. And he was like, what? So I sent him like, <laughs> like a picture of him next to a picture of a hedgehog. And he's like, oh my God, I look like a hedgehog. So he goes back, you know, six weeks later or whatever. And um you know he tells her this story and it's like my wife says I shouldn't look like a hedgehog it's not a good look for me and so she like does his hair ever so slightly different and he comes home and he's like what do you think is it less hedgehoggy and I'm like no honey it's still pretty it's still pretty hedge piggy like it's 
that's the thing. And so since then, like, I answer the phone, like, hey, Hedge Pig, or, you know, how you doing tonight, Hedge Pig, or any of that kind of stuff, to the point where he signed some of my Christmas presents this last year as, like, to my wife from your hedgehog. So, um, over the last few months, I've been, like, filling my house with little ceramic hedgehogs and things because I miss him. He, like, lives far away, and it sort of reminds me of him. So, when I saw this, like, Mill Hill hedge pig, I was like, oh, I want that for my refrigerator. But I think I'm going to take it to Austin after it's done and put it on his refrigerator. Yeah. But not tell him. Just, like, sneak in, and he's, like, there getting his stuff in the morning, and, like, boop, here's this hedge pig. Um, so, anyway, feel free to join me. I started a hashtag. Hashtag Mill Hill March Madness and let's fill March with beads because like we love the bling All right So I have one last bit of haul and I have loved watching um, Nicole at I X practice X stitch X craft <laughs> um, She got one of the stitchy boxes she got like one of the four that I didn't order um, and she's been uh, putting pictures on her Instagram story as she was opening all the little the little things that come in a stitchy box. And uh, she started her first floss tube was an unboxing of, I think it was a Black Needle Society box. So today, or I should say la yesterday when I got the mail, I had the little slip that said a package was at the office. I was like, oh, what's here? It's my stitchy box stash delights for January. So I'm going to open this as my little unboxing. I haven't peeked. I haven't done anything other than it came in like a plastic sleeve. So let's see what's in it. This is only the, this is like the first real subscription ones that uh, for the Stash Delights that Liz is doing. She did a sort of tester box in October and I got that one and loved it. And so the minute she opened it up, I like signed up. This is the first month of actual Stash Delight. So let's see. Okay, so we've got our little, like, card. And she sends a snack in all of them. So for this one, we've got little peppermint bark candy cubes. Okay, these might not show on cam camera because there's, like, um, like, words on the packaging. But you can see they look like a little Mondrian with the little cubes. and But it's one piece. So I'm guessing it's like a peppermint and a chocolate and something and you pop it in your mouth. That looks fun. I'm going to try that tonight. I don't know how I'm going to divide it up to share with the people in my life. And then we've got this gorgeous um, purple, love me some purple tissue. And then we open it up and oh, it's like more wrapping. We've got more little, what's this? More little wrapping things. So we've got, just make sure because I'm neurotic. Actually, I'm, I shouldn't say that. I'm trying not to say that, but um, I also am. Um, sort of, you know, I see my therapist. Mental health is important. Um, little tissue paper with nothing in it. We've got, oh, she does these, like, sorry bags. This beautiful little bag. Let's see what's in the bag. What do we got here? Okay, this is cool. We've got a peppermint twist lip balm. Love me some lip balm. I have a little thing by the bedside over there with literally... Six Burt's Bees sticking in it. So, uh, yeah, Peppermint Twist Lip Balm. That's awesome. We've got, oh, a beeswax. Okay, this is cool. This is going to be really helpful with the, with the um, blending filament, <laughs> right? Like sort of thread conditionery beeswax. Nice big chunk. Uh, and that can just live in this little bag and be awesome right and isn't that gorgeous I actually have the one from the October right here look at this isn't this beautiful this... so this one isn't in the one I just opened right but it just happened to be sitting here um but these gorgeous little hand I think they're handmade maybe not they're but they're done with like reused saris from India so sort of small business women's business and labor and all kinds of stuff all right so then we've got oh we've got a chart Ooh, this is cool Look at this chart. Tell me those colors aren't awesome. Those are gorgeous. We're totally doing this at some point. Um, Star-crossed Stash Delight chart. Um, sort of looks like um, Andalusian tiles. Sort of has that look to it like at the Alhambra. Don't, see, I'm slipping into teacher mode again. Come to Rainy Day Stitcher and learn some art history stuff. Oh my gosh, so I'm opening up this guy. You ready? 
Look at all that. There's a lot of stuff in this box. Holy moly, Liz, you have outdone yourself. Um, I'm like 40 bucks for all of this. Okay, so we've got, oh, this is gorgeous. We've got some thread works. Look at that sort of indigo purple. We've got some Gloriana silk in this gorgeous brown, what is this called? Bare Branch colorway. We've got some dinky dyes. Oh, this is so beautiful. Frosty Lavender. It almost looks like mid-range blue denim uh, in this light. We've got two Gast. I need to check these against my list of what I'm kidding up. Oh, they're both limited edition though. So this one is exclusive qu corduroys. Oh my gosh. It's a sort of deep, deep brown um, with some little bit of tan. Totally looks like my corduroy skirt I have in the closet. Yeah. I got a corduroy skirt. Wear it with my big old, like, knee-high boots in the winter when I see people in person. And then this one, which is called Winter Storm. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. All of these, like, dark grays with a little bit of green to it. Totally looks like the clouds, you know, like, you know, when the snow is coming. And then the last, all of the stashy, stitchy boxes, the Stash Delights, come with a... Um, exclusive, or um, she sells them in the shop too, but initially exclusive, a flower silk, which is her so one of her stitchy box lines, and this one is called Winter Mix, and it's these really, I mean, it goes with the other colors beautifully, this sort of light blue and this dark gray and this tan color, and if this one's like the one in the October, I'm gonna sort of pull it open, maybe, maybe not. It'd be hard to tell without completely unraveling it. Um, but the one that was in the October box, it was done in such a way that the, the chunks of color were long. So um, you could make different colorways and variegations based on where you cut the thread and then what you used it with. It wasn't such a small sort of length of variegation that you would just sort of use it and go through the colors. And, and so you could sort of, you know, cut it in half or color it, cut it in thirds. Um, I think this one might be the same way, um, but it's, it's lovely. All right, we have one last little bitty package, uh, this little guy. Love this packaging, love the little bits, like not a lot of plastic and, um, so, oh, oh, things went boom again. There they are. Maybe, nope, that's not it. I don't know where it went. There's a thing, and there's a thing. I'm going to have to very carefully go all over my floor. Um, but we got some embellishments. So we've got, ooh, okay, so we've got this little snowflake charm. Let's see if we can zoom in on that. It's really, really cute. Put that carefully. We've got some little um, rainbow moonstones faceted rounds. Okay, these are kind of cool because I think I got these in one of my stitching boxes that I got already. And uh, I think the ocean box maybe. Uh, and so now I have like double I can really do something cool with it but like putting with a you know one little package but having more is kind of helpful sometimes and then look at this sucker this emerald shimmery Shvarsh I don't know how to say it Shvarsky's look at that sucker he is gorgeous not quite sure what I'm gonna do with him but I'll figure something out so anyway there's my mini unboxing and all my stuff uh, I think I'm going to do these about every two or three weeks, I should say. I'm a slow stitcher, so three weeks makes more sense. Um, so until then, stay safe, you know, stay socially distanced, stitch all the things, buy all the things, and I'll see you then. Thank you, everybody.